Acts chapter number 26. We begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. By the way, that's what I'm asking for you all to do today. Hear me patiently. Hmm? Don't watch your watch. Hmm? Where's Addie? Addie, when I say I'm just for a few minutes, that don't mean just for a few minutes, all right? She already said that to Miss Ned a few weeks ago. She said, why does he say that? He's always long. Let's skip down to verse 15. The Bible says, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? He's talking about when the Lord met him on the road to Damascus. And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner." King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. We thank you for your excellent greatness. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for loving a wretch like me. I was lost in sin on my way to hell. Lord, you made a way. God, I'm thankful for Calvary. I'm thankful that you shed your precious blood to become our propitiation. I'm glad through the Holy Spirit of God you came to where I was when I was lost and convicted me of sin. And God, you drew me to an altar of repentance. God, I'm thankful for that day you saved me. That song Brother James just sang is reality to me. Is Lord, I got saved. Lord, changed my life. I've never been the same. Lord, I'm not always what I should be, but I'm thankful I'm not what I once was. I'm not lost in my sins. Lord, I fear as we assembled here this morning, there are good moral people, maybe good religious people, maybe people of high esteem, that, Lord, have been baptized or 
been a member of a church, but they've never been saved. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray as Brother Ron's already prayed for Holy Ghost conviction. Lord, unless you open their eyes, uh, they'll stay in their blindness, they'll stay in their darkness. God, I pray today would be the day that Lord, that verse we just read would come to pass in their life. They'd be turned from darkness into light. They'd be turned from the power of Satan unto God. God, I pray you'd break the chains of their lives. Uh, God, I pray if there's any prodigal sons or daughters, today'd be the day they get back to the Father's house. God, I pray if there's anybody struggling, God, you'd strengthen them. I pray if there's anybody seeking, they'd find I pray if anybody's got a question, they'd find the answer is Jesus. Now, Father, help us this day. Be with that little boy Colt, that little baby. Lord, you know what he uh, stands in need of. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are providentially hindered. Uh, be with those that are traveling. Uh, but, Father, for the next few minutes, put a hedge about us. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, we'll bless you and praise you for what you do. Uh, for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to draw your attention to a few things. Uh, now, the Apostle Paul is standing before the king. His life is in the hands of the king. The Apostle Paul, uh, standing here for his life, uh, is faced with things that we've never been faced with. He's faced with a chopping block. He's faced with losing his head. Uh, he's faced uh, with all these things, not for wrong that he's done, uh, but because he's been faithful to God, uh, and he's been faithful to let folks know that Jesus loves them, uh, that he died according to the Scriptures, uh, that he was buried, and that he rose again according to the Scriptures, uh, and that he'll save them from their sins. Uh, I want you to notice a couple things. Notice the attitude of Paul. And Paul said in verse number 2, I think myself happy. Mm. I'm here to tell you if he was standing for our lives, uh, happy would not be an adjective that would describe most of us. Uh, most of us would be fearful. Uh, most of us would be worried. Uh, most of us uh, uh, would be scared to death. Uh, 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 but he said, I think myself happy uh, that I'm able to answer for myself. Uh, you see, uh, uh, Paul knew one thing. Uh, he was not before Agrippa by accident, uh, but by the providence of God. Uh, and if this was going to be his last day, uh, he's going to make certain that king and everybody around there uh, knew that Jesus was the answer for their life. Uh, he said, I think myself happy. Mm, are you happy today? Mm. True happiness is only found in being in the will of God. Uh, we find the attitude of Paul. How's your attitude? You know your attitude will never get any higher than your attitude. That's why some of you are always bottom feeders. That didn't cost you anything, did it? Huh? We see the attitude of Paul. Notice the attesting of Paul. Or Paul's witness. Now, I won't read all the verses, but from verses 4 through verse 23, the apostle Paul begins to explain to Agrippa what happened. He said, Agrippa, you know that I was a Pharisee. You know what a Pharisee is. A Pharisee was a keeper of the law. More than that, they was the most religious people on the planet. Uh, and he said, uh, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Uh, I, and I was going about being a good Pharisee. Uh, and I was going about rounding up these Christians. Uh, and I was arresting them. And I was persecuting them. Uh, and uh, he even had some put to death. Uh, he said, I was doing what I was supposed to do uh, as a religious zealot. Uh, he said, but something happened. Uh, I was on my way to Damascus, uh, and a great light shone around me uh, and knocked me to the ground. Uh, and a voice uh, 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 began to speak to me. Uh, I said, who art thou, Lord? Uh, he said, I'm Jesus, uh, the one thou kickest against the pricks. Uh, and he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Uh, he said, I want you to go uh, and be a voice to the Gentiles uh, and tell everybody uh, that I'll save them from their sins. 
uh, look what he said uh, in verse number 18 uh, to open their eyes uh, and to turn them from darkness to light uh, and from the power of Satan unto God uh, that they may receive forgiveness of sins uh, and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith uh, that is in me uh, uh, friend that message is still true today uh, God wants to turn you from darkness to light uh, if you're here today uh, and unsaved uh, lost in your sins uh, you've been blinded by the darkness of sin uh, by the power of Satan uh, you've been bound by your sin uh, but I got good news uh, uh, the Lord wants to turn the light on for you uh, he wants to turn you from the power of evil and Satan uh, to the power of God uh, he wants to change your life uh, and it happens uh, by you putting your faith and trust uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior we see the attesting of Paul he tells them everything that Jesus done for him. And he said, I've been faithful to what God's called me to do. Uh, I started at Damascus, uh, went to Jerusalem, uh, all Judea, all the coast of Judea, into the known parts of the world. Uh, anywhere I could find a step stool, uh, I'd stand up and preach Jesus uh, and tell him what he did for me. Uh, and he said, King Agrippa, you know this. You know what all the prophets have spoken. Uh, I'm just preaching uh, uh, what they said is true. Uh, and he said, you know. King Agrippa and he let the hammer fall mm. and there's nobody sitting in here today that's not heard the name Jesus mm. some of you may think he's just brought out at Christmas time as a babe in the manger or you come on Easter to hear about an empty tomb well he was born in a manger by a virgin then he lived a sinless, perfect life. And he went to the cross of Calvary and died for your sin and my sin. Uh, he was buried, uh, and to prove that he was God, on the third appointed morning, he got up from the grave under his own power. Uh, he was seen of many witnesses, some 500. Uh, then he ascended into heaven. Uh, and my dear friends, he's the only means of salvation. You can know his name, but unless you know him, it'll avail you nothing. Notice, if you will, the angered Jews. Look at verse number 21. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. You know, it's a known thing. They said you can talk about anything but religious and politics. You get to talk about religion and politics, you're going to make somebody mad. Well, I want to tell you something. When you start preaching this book, you're going to make both of them mad. Uh can I say, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. This book is a book about love. But this book doesn't sugarcoat things. In order to understand the love of God, you've got to understand how rotten we are. Uh, and I know man didn't write this because it tells us how sinful man is. I don't know if you all noticed I did put a little statement on the sign today. Christian got a word through the sheriff's office that today in Boone County there was going to be some of this mob protesting the Catholic Church and Southern Baptist Churches over abortion. Well, they can't protest around us because everything around us is private property. But in case they drive by, I want them to see abortions murder. Now, I wasn't being political because I did put a Bible verse on there, Jeremiah 1, 5. Uh, but can I say, when you start telling folks about their sin, they don't like it. Mm. And this Bible reveals exactly how sinful man is. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible also says that uh, uh, but God commended His love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, it's a love letter uh, talking about a holy God that is love, that even though we were sinners uh, and deserved to die in our sin and go to hell, uh, He loved us anyway uh, and gave the best He had to offer. Uh, he gave His only begotten Son to keep us out of hell, and I bless His holy name. 
what can I say? When I start getting around a religious crowd that don't believe the Bible, you make them mad. There's a lot of religion around us that don't want folks to get saved because it's going to hurt their treasury. Can I say, I'm not worried about the treasury. My God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Are you listening? And he owns all the gold and all the tater in the hills too. Are you listening? And God's not broke today. It angered the Jews. But then notice the almost persuaded in verse number 28. Some of the saddest words in the Bible. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Brother Ron, I fear that there have been people that have come and heard me preach and they'll die and go to hell almost persuaded to be a Christian. It's a wonderful thing that folks will get out of bed, they'll get cleaned up, they'll come to the house of God, they'll sit down, they'll hear the singing, they'll hear the preaching and Miss Melissa, they get almost to heaven. But they need to take that extra step and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Agrippa's in hell today, and that phrase rings over and over and over in his mind every second of every minute in hell that he's there because he almost became a Christian. Brother Bob carries a little piece of paper in his Bible, and most of the time he's got it. shows how far it is from your head to your heart it's only about that far and that's how far it is from hell to heaven a lot of people have a head knowledge they've heard of Jesus few have the heart knowledge I'm interested this morning in verse 24 the Bible says and as he thus spake for himself Festus one of the governors by the way there's governors in the Bible that weren't saved too you're welcome. That didn't cost you anything either. Send that to Brashear. I don't care. No. Huh? Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside the, thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. This fellow's listening to this man of God preach, and he takes all he can take, and he calls, jumps up and calls him crazy. He said, you're crazy. All that studying's made you Lulu. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Huh? I ought to preach with this thought this morning. I ought to preach on I'm just crazy enough. The world thinks we're crazy. Huh? You go back to church Sunday night, yep. You go Wednesday night, yep. You go to revival meeting every night, yep. You have all them revivals all the time, yep. You, you all are crazy. Well, I'm just crazy enough. That's all I want you to know. Uh, can I say, first of all, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, I just am crazy enough to believe that. Uh, I believe He's the Son of God. Uh, I believe He's the Savior of the world. Uh, I believe He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe that. Uh, hey, I'm not looking for another God. Uh, I found the one. Uh, his name is Jesus. Jesus, uh, you say you're crazy. Yeah, uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe that. Uh, uh, preacher, uh, you're crazy. Uh, I'm just crazy enough uh, to believe there's no salvation apart uh, from Calvary. Uh, you'll never get saved uh, unless you realize uh, what transpired on Calvary uh, was for your redemption. Uh, that Jesus was beaten beyond recognition. Uh, that he shed his blood uh, for your sins. Uh, that that Jesus uh, became the only sacrifice for the sins of the world. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, you'll not get to heaven. Uh, I'm turning over a new leaf. Uh, you'll not get to heaven taking a sacrament. Uh, you'll not get to heaven being baptized. Uh, you'll not get to heaven being a church member. Uh, uh, there's no salvation uh, apart from Calvary. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe that. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, that Jesus' blood cleanseth from all sin. Uh, hey, 
way. I just believe in the old time way. I believe it's a blood way. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. But it wasn't human blood. It had to be royal, redeeming, redemptive blood that came from glory. God's own son shed his blood that you and I could be saved. I'm just crazy enough to believe that. Uh, Hey, I'm crazy enough to believe uh, that there's a country called heaven for the saved. Uh, I just believe it. Uh, Say, you've got a fantasy world. You've got a utopia going on in your mind. Uh, I'm crazy enough to believe that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Uh, And if I go to prepare a place for you, uh, I will come again, receive you unto myself, uh, that where I am you may be also. Uh, Hey, John said, I saw a holy city coming down. Uh, uh, out of heaven uh, hey, uh, it's got 12 foundations of precious stones uh, it's got gates of pearl walls of jasper uh, it's got streets of gold uh, but in the midst there's a throne uh, with thunderings and lightnings and he that sits on the throne uh, his name's Jesus uh, hey I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, there's a place that I'm a citizen of uh, hey I call it home though I've never been there uh, hey I own everything over there although I don't have any money in my pocket. Uh, hey, i just been crazy enough to believe uh, there's a country for the redeemed. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, I've been certified by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, hey, I was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, hey, I'm glad he convicted me. Uh, I'm glad he drew me. Uh, I'm glad he sealed me. Uh, I'm glad he stays with me. Uh, hey, I'm glad, hallelujah, he convicts me when I'm wrong uh, and he confirms me when I'm right uh, hey I just been certified by him uh, how do you know you saved uh, cause he lives inside of me uh, his spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am the son of God uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe that preacher you're mad uh, hey leave me alone I'm uh, having a good time uh, hey uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe the scriptures are complete uh, I don't need a new version uh, I don't need a new copy uh, I don't need to add anything uh, or take anything away uh, I believe God said what he meant uh, and meant what he said uh, I believe he took holy men of old uh, and he used them to pin down uh, the perfect unadulterated word of God uh, hey I'm just satisfied in what God said uh, hey and if he said it it settles it uh, I don't need any commentaries. Uh, I don't need any other things. Uh, I just need what thus saith the Lord. Uh, And I believe every word, uh, every jot, uh, every tittle. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Uh, Hey, can I say this? Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, that Jesus is coming soon. Uh, Hey, uh, I'm a listening for the trumpet uh, and the shout of the archangel. Uh, Jesus is going to step out on the clouds, uh, going to say something like, come up hither, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, uh, and we which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with them, uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, the Bible says this, no also, uh, in the last days perilous times shall come. Uh, friend, they're here. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe Jesus is on his way. Uh, Hey, he's just waiting for the Father to say, go get your bride. Uh, He's a coming. Hallelujah, I'm a going. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Uh, I believe it. Uh, I believe it all, Brother James. Uh, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Said, preacher, you're crazy. Thank you. You're putting me in good company. Outside the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist, there's no man walked this earth greater than Paul the Apostle. They called him crazy. You call me crazy. You put me in good company. I said, Preacher, I just don't know about all that. Well, if you get to know him, you'll know about it all. Uh, yeah, there's nothing like him. There's a whole lot more I could say that I'm crazy over. Nothing more to say this I'm crazy over Jesus Amen. met him 48 years ago yeah. although I've never seen him yep. and he speaks to me although I've never heard his audible voice yep. said you're crazy I know it I'm just crazy enough yeah, yeah. and I'm crazy over him 
because he changed my life. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he's given me a peace that passes all understanding. And he is my dearest friend. Everything I have came from his hand. My very breath is in his hand. My life is in his hand. And I'm crazy about him. The real question is, are you? I said, what will people think of me? Who cares? What's important is what Jesus knows. I want to tell you, no matter what you choose to do in life, there's always going to be somebody find fault in it. Always somebody going to think you're a freak. I'd just rather be a Jesus freak. So I don't want to be one of you. One day you'll wish you would have. Be like old Agrippa. Preacher, I just don't know about all that. Why don't you just take that first step? Put your faith and trust in Him. See if He don't change your life. Hmm? Hmm? There's people in this building. If you'd have seen them for Jesus, before they met Jesus, you wouldn't want to be around them. Uh, I'm talking about some folks that used to be wicked. Used to be very scary. Used to be foul mouthed. Used to be drug addicts. Used to be drunks. Used to be every vile thing you can think of. But today, they're sitting in the house of God. They got a smile on their face and a good countenance. They got joy in their heart. They got praise unto God in their lips. So what happened? They met Jesus. So well, they're crazy too. Yeah, hallelujah, that's our crowd. I wonder how crazy you are over Jesus. So, well, preacher, I'm just too dignified. Why don't you lose some of that dignity? Uh, quit starching your shorts. You won't be so dignified. Uh, uh, listen, if you can't enjoy Jesus, you don't. You can't enjoy life. Uh, I just love him. I love everything about him. He's never done me wrong, Brother Bob. Uh, Pilate, when he inspected him, after they beat him, said, I find no fault in him. Uh, can I say this? I've known him 48 years. He never let me down. I find no fault in him. I love him because he first loved me. Friend, he loves you. He wants to change your life. So if I get saved, well, I act as crazy as you? Probably not, but you might act worse. You might act like Phil over there. No. See, the outward thing is just really reacting to what's going on in the heart. See, he gets too big in here. And then he's got to come out. Sometimes he comes out through your eyes. Sometimes he comes out through a shout. Sometimes he comes out through a, whatever Phil does over there all the time. Sometimes somebody just grinning from ear to ear. But if you've ever met him, sooner or later, he's going to come out on you. I said, well, what? what do you do about people that think you're crazy? I just go on. But sooner or later, I'm going to hook up with somebody else that's crazy. And we're going to have a good time talking about the Lord. Quit worrying about what everybody else may brand you. You ought to be worried about dying and going to hell. You ought to be worried about facing a holy God. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. You ought to be worried about that. You ought to be worried about the judgment seat. When he's going to profess to you every sin that you've ever committed and then throw you off into the lake of fire. You see, a child of God, we have no sin record because he cleansed us from all sin. It's not too difficult to get excited knowing my sins are gone. Yours could be too. But you've got to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ.
Today, we're going to give you an opportunity. Today, we're going to invite you to come to Jesus. Say, I don't know how to get saved, preacher. That's okay. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to get saved. But it's real simple. If you know you're lost, and you know the only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus, just come and ask him to save you. He promised that if any would come to him, he'd no wise cast it out. Matter of fact, if you take a first step toward him, he'll help you take the rest. And friend, listen, I don't act like this all the time. But I am saved all the time. I don't have to worry about hell. Because Jesus saved me. And he'll save you, friend, if you'll come and trust him. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. Why don't you get in this altar? If you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to Jesus. Nothing like being saved. Nothing like having t- true joy. Nothing like having peace with God. Friend, you can be saved today. They're picking out a song. Folks are praying. We're going to have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Lord, down in my soul, I believe there's someone here lost today. Lord, I don't know who they are. I don't know anybody's heart, but you know everybody's heart. God, I pray. Lord, the sweet Holy Ghost of God, go by their way, begin to squeeze their heart, and through cords of love, draw them to the Savior. I pray they'd come, repent of their sins, and trust Christ. Lord, if there's somebody here saved, but they've lost the joy of their salvation, I pray they'd come. Lord, I pray. Lord, they'd get things settled with the Lord. Lord, I know right now Satan's trying to distract, disrupt. I pray you'd bind him in the powers of hell. Lord, turn someone from darkness unto light. God, help someone come to Christ today. Lord, bless this invitation. God, these in the altar, whatever they're here for, bless them. Get glory to your name, Father. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.